So to see why brute force is not an efficient method, consider the question of how many circuits would a complete graph with eight vertices have. So now, a complete graph means that every vertex is connected to every other. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight vertices. And so a complete graph means each vertex is connected to every other vertex text, and I'm going to get tired of drawing this pretty quickly, so you can just imagine the rest of it. So let's think about how many circuits there would be. So let's say I'm sitting here at my starting point. How many different directions, how many different places can I go to from here? So from here, I can go to any of seven different locations. So I have seven choices for my very first, uh, visit, right? So from my starting point, I can go any of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different directions, right? Now from each of those, so f let's say I decide to go here. From there, how many choices do I have? Well, this vertex is connected to every other because it's a complete graph. I've already visited this city, so I don't want to go there. So I have not seven choices, but six choices for my next one. And I'm going to multiply those, and let me show you why. So let's say I went, fault went here. From here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six different choices. If instead I had gone here, I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six different choices. If I went here, I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six different choices. So notice for each of those seven original branches, I'm going to have six new possibilities. And so that's seven times six, right? Six for each of those seven would be seven times six. Now let's say I pick one of those, and now how many choices do I have for my next route? For my next path, I've got five. For the next one, four. For the next one, three. For the ne next one, two. And for the last choice, uh, there's only one, right? Once I visited every other city, there's only one choice to get back to the starting point. Now it turns out that this is going to be twice as many as there actually are of unique circuits. Uh, the reason is because the circuit that I end up with here is identical to the circuit in reverse order. And so I'm actually going to have to divide this by two in order to get the true number of unique circuits. And this number ends up coming out to be 5,040 unique circuits. Now, that is a lot of circuits, and I certainly don't want to have to list all 5,000 of them and calculate the weight of each of them. That is pretty darn tedious. Um, by the way, there is a handy notation for this called, uh, a factorial. This would be n minus 1 over 2, sorry, n minus 1 factorial over 2, where n is the number of, number of vertices. Uh, if you've never seen this before, the idea of a factorial is that, uh, for example, uh, let's see, so like 3 factorial means 3 times 2 times 1. 5 factorial means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So in this case, this would be 8 minus 1 factorial over 2, which means that's 7, right? 7 factorial, which means 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all, oops, all over 2, which you'll recognize is exactly what we had there. And if your calculator happens to have that factorial button, it can come in handy. So there we go. It turns out that we have all these crazy number of, 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 uh, circuits possible. And, and while 5,000 would be ridiculous to do by hand, a computer could do that pretty easily. But if we go and start adding more cities to our visit, you can see that very quickly, like 20 here, uh, with only 20 cities, we're already up to this ridiculously huge number of, of, of cities. I mean, this would take a computer doing a billion circuits a second, uh, you know, over two years, about two years, uh, to look at all of these. So, it turns out that using brute force is not going to be a reasonable method, uh, for graphs with more than maybe three or four, uh, vertices. So instead, we're going to look at some alternate methods called heuristic methods.